So inside my checklist book, I've got a really great checklist for you. It's my photography checklist. And when I wrote this book, my checklists compiled of 70 plus business checklists, etc. One of the things that really inspired me to write this book and include in it is this photography checklist. Come on, let's check it out. Now, do you need to take photos of yourself for your website, a book, social media, or, well, guess what? You don't necessarily need to hire a professional photographer anymore to take your own photos. Hmm. Besides, they cost too much. You know, you have to be ready when they're ready, you know, per se, according to their schedule. And you don't always get what you pay for or what you want out of the few photos that they took for you to choose from, right? <laughs> well, a long time ago, I decided to take my own photos of myself with the help of a remote control linked to my phone and the help of a friend. Add to that, with my photography checklist, you'll learn all you need in order to prepare for your photo shoot, what equipment you need, and what types of photos to take as well. Come on, let's get into it. Now, here's my photography checklist. And right off the bat, I just want to kind of go into the pros and cons for hiring a professional or doing it yourself. Because just in a nutshell, if you do it yourself, you know, you take your own photos, you get to do it on your own time. It could be midnight when you're ready to take your photos. I've done it before, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock at night. I was ready. Let's shoot all night. Also, you can take as many photos as you want. You're not limited or restricted. It's unlimited how many photos you could take with your phone, camera, whatever you got. If you involve a friend or a family member, they're always glad to help. And they'll probably work for free. You know, take them out to lunch, right? <laughs> but the point is, is that's all you need. And they're doing just the basic stuff. They don't have to have any photography skills. Here, uh, move that over there. Oh, give me that over there. Okay, great. Thanks a lot. You know, I really appreciate you being here because it helps me out. And we're going to get through this right away. And then, hey, we'll go to lunch. All right. If you hire a professional, yes, they will bring high quality camera equipment, hopefully. They'll bring their expertise, hopefully, but then you're going to be limited, mostly based on time and location. You know, if you wanted something to be photographed somewhere, somewhere special, it's going to cost you because they're going to have to travel to where that is. If you do things yourself, you could go right to that building across town or across town to that mountain or river stream or Grand Canyon, or, you know, whatever. And you just save so much money doing it yourself. This checklist is going to help you do just that. Number two, what suggested equipment will you need to take great photos of yourself? Well, I give you all the equipment I use. This is a 72-inch high tripod. Don't get anything lower than that, especially if you're tall. You know, gentlemen, definitely 72-inch. Ladies, you're still going to love it. Awesome. Now, you can use a cell phone or digital camera. It's up to you, but today's cell phones are so great with taking pictures. The quality, the detail, the color. No. My Android Galaxy S10 Plus is perfect, and that's all I need. And if your phone doesn't take great pictures and you need a reference for where to go buy something, just check out backmarket.com for either a Galaxy S20 Plus or other phone type or brand that you like. But those phones, ugh, you know, and be willing to invest a couple hundred dollars, maybe 300, you know, to get an older version phone like the S20. Because I think at this time, the S22 is out or something. And my S10 is like <laughs> three to five years old, but it still takes great pictures. And I went and bought a second one. So I have two S10 plus phones. Anyhow, good stuff. Check it out. It's there if you want it. Now, this is another essential that you might need. And this is a smartphone, tripod, adapter, cell phone, holder, mount, adapter. <laughs> well, if that isn't a mouthful, I don't know what is. But I recommend buying two of these. And what these do is they mount on top of your tripod and they hold your cell phone. Pretty cool. It'll be screwed on top of the tripod and then that mount will hold your cell phone. Nice. Next, the remote control. I love this. I can't live without it. I won't shoot video or photography without this, especially if I'm by myself because you can press the button and then the camera goes off, takes the picture, shoots the video. Start the video, stop the video. These remote controls are awesome. I've told so many people about them, and they love them when they get them. Anyhow, what happens is you're standing in front of the camera, and your friend, let's say, has the remote control. And you get into a sequence where you go, okay, I'm going to strike a pose and a smile, and I'm going to hold it for a few seconds. Click the remote. And then I'm going to change. And then click the remote. And then I'm going to change. 
click the remote. And then I'm going to change. I'm going to do this for about 10 poses, 10 smiles. I'm going to try to get the best one out of my 10 shots. Once we do 10, we'll take a break and I'll go look at what we've photographed. If I like what I see, we're done. If we got to do it again, we'll do another 10 on our own time. Awesome. Ah, lighting. This is what I use for lighting. I love these lights. Softbox lighting kit. Check it out. Give you that tip right there. Green screen. If you need a green screen, just click that link there. It takes you over to Amazon where you can pick up that green screen. And I like the green screens to be long. Wide, five feet, six, that's okay, minimum. Ten is great, but long. When you have a long, 13 feet long, you can get full body shots because you can step back with the camera and take your photograph of yourself, full body shot, kind of cool. Other colors you might want. You might want black background. You might want white. This is a beige looking one, abstract, dark gray, got all kinds of stuff in here. So check those out. And then if you need a stand, a background stand, I'll give you the link for that too. So you can hang all these backgrounds. Good. Now, what to wear to your photo shoot. I talk about this, you know, wearing comfortable clothing or what's appropriate for your profession, your niche, your industry. So I go into that right there. How do you prepare for your photo shoot? Grooming is everything when you're trying to make a great impression. So, you know, get your hair cut, get your hair done, do whatever you need to do to look your best. Here's something very important. Get plenty of rest. Three to five days prior to the photo shoot, the camera is not forgiving. Your eyes will speak, <laughs> you know, I'm tired, I look tired, I look dead, I look like I just woke up. So be sure to get three to five days worth of good rest. And if you're worried about your looks or your weight, Go on a two to three week exercise health diet kick routine. Really put in the effort, you know? If you'd go on a diet and exercise routine for two to three weeks, well, in two to four weeks, after another week of that exercise and the dieting kicking in, you're going to look great for photos. You are. And remember, the camera adds 10 pounds. You know, you've heard that saying camera adds 10 pounds. You'll look 10 pounds heavier just in a photo. Uh, so we got to trim up, slim up, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, do it. It's all good. Gather up and test all your equipment. Make sure everything's working great. You might want to order something last minute, that kind of thing. What kind of photos do you need? We're talking high resolution, which most phones already do high resolution. We need 1920 by 1080 or higher. We need headshots. We need half body shots. We need full body shots. We need action shots. We need facial gestures. We need landscape and portrait props holding your books and all that stuff. Location. Where will you be shooting these pictures? At home? In a studio? Maybe your office? How about at your desk? On the phone? With a client? Action. How about speaking? You know, pretend like you're speaking. Use hand gestures like you're making a point or you're pointing to someone in the audience. Or what are you doing when you speak? Holding a microphone? That's okay. Pretty cool. Conference room. You know what? Go down to the biggest hotels in your area. Go check out their conference rooms. Ask the front desk. I'd like to see the conference room. And when you do, ask them, I'm kind of here to take a couple pictures of myself. I'm pretty important in my own mind. You don't joke about it, right? And they'll say, oh, I think I know what you want to do. Yeah, just go down the hallway, take a left, and there's a conference room at the end of the hall. Nobody's there. Take all the time you want, and good luck with your photography. Well, bring three changes of outfits to the hotel. You can change in the bathroom. And then go down and take pictures in the conference room of the hotel. Maybe they've got a podium right there and you can stand behind it or to the side or in front of it. Make it really look like you're speaking. Or maybe they've got a really nice backdrop in the hotel against a wall, maybe some wallpaper. They got great plants. Who knows? But some of these really, really, really big hotels, they got all kinds of places for you to take photos at. Good stuff. Networking. You could be in an empty room and put your hand out pretending like you're talking to someone. That's cool. Book signings. Sit down at a table or a desk, have your book, and pretend like you're signing the book, have pictures taken of that, and then handing the book to a fake person. You know, they're not going to see who it really is. Other locations. Do you have any ideas for that? Outside, by a tree, body of water, up against a building, etc. How will you go about editing your images? So, you've taken a lot of photos of yourself. Now what? Well, the photos are on your phone. So, you're going to share those images those photographs via email attachment to yourself. You're going to email those photos to yourself. You might not be able to get them all because of size restriction. 
So you might want to use a file transfer app unless you decide only to send yourself those photographs that you liked. So let's say you took 50 pictures, but you only like five of them or 10 of them. Well, that's easy to send via email, via attachment to yourself without hitting any restrictions on size limit. Because like, for example, Gmail, they only let you send 25 megabytes worth of data as an attachment. So some of these high-res pictures, well, they're going to be pretty big. So to move all your photos off your phone over to your computer, if you want to do editing on your computer like I do. But if you want to do it on your phone, hey, go for it. But most of the time, these photos have to wind up on your computer anyway because you're going to store them, you're going to use them on your website, in books, etc. So you need to get them off your phone. Again, this is a great section on editing your images. I just go into a lot of tips for that. Good stuff. Check it out. And then lastly, how often should you take pictures of yourself? Weekly for social media postings. Every one to three or six months for any need or use. New launches for new books, products, and services you're promoting. And then annually. You know, take pictures of yourself uh, at least once a year or every couple of years and make sure you're not using a photograph that's 10 years old or 15 or 20. Ooh. Anyhow, hey, if you like this checklist, then go ahead and check out the description box underneath this video and click on this link right here. Download and print this checklist. You'll get access to the free Google Doc. It'll take you to the Google Doc, of which click File, click Make a Copy. And if you make a copy, you can save it to your Gmail, Google Drive. Okay? Then you can have it at your end and you can edit at will. You can email it to yourself as a Word doc. You can download it to your computer as a Word doc. Or you can print this checklist and hey, go to town. Check it out, read it. Good stuff here. And don't forget though, the links are in here. And that's why it's important maybe just to save it to your Google hard drive or email it to yourself as a Word doc. Because even if you open a Word doc, you can still click on the links that go to Amazon, etc., for those recommended photography equipment recommendations. Okay, if you want the paperback version of my checklist book, get the print version. Click this link right here, and it'll take you over to Amazon, where you can order the book in hand. They'll mail it to you. It's a big manual, about 200 plus pages. All 70 checklists are in here. And just look at these checklists that you're going to get inside this one manual. Really nice to have this in hand. When you just want to peruse this checklist book, look through it and go, you know, I might need that one day, you know, good stuff. Anyhow, I hope my photography checklist is going to be helpful to you. I know for me, whenever I take photographs of myself for my needs, website, books, whatever, in my head, I'm running down this checklist and I save myself hundreds of dollars. And I take these photographs of myself on my own time. It's convenient for me, whether it's 10 in the morning or 10 at night. Anyhow, photography checklist out of my checklist book. Hey, I hope it helps you just like it helps me.